I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design. I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focusing on VRAG usage within a large project environment. And in this episode, I'm going to give you a specific walkthrough uh, looking at how VRAG handles and preps complex uh, involving large data sets and showing you a few tips and techniques to get the most out of data transfer in and out of VRAD. Okay, so in the days before VRED, we tended to render everything in 3ds Max, which delivers awesome rendering results, but it meant we spent a lot of time in Alias stripping engineering data to remove all the B surfaces, all the hidden details, and then mesh it, which was very slow to do, added cost to the job of doing it, and from a, a customer end user perspective, offered no perceived value. It was just a process of, of data prepping. Now, the, the joy of VRED is that it seems great at handling huge amounts of raw data, raw engineering data. And we found that there's absolutely no need for alias strip out in many cases. Um, you can just throw data in and use it straight away. So our pace of work has improved considerably and the cost for us to produce images uh, has, has reduced significantly as a result. Um, it's also, in many respects, VRED has allowed us to successfully tackle some projects and deadlines we'd previously avoid. It, you know, it helps reduce the risk and minimise the stress of you know, getting design and visualisation work done. But in terms of handling large data sets, large engineering data sets, um, there are really good optimization tools within VRED, um, which do help flush the data out and, and resolve many of the common aspects of data import. But the, these initial tools aren't necessarily geared up for handling really complicated engineer, engineering data inputs. Some of the engineering data that we've worked with is structured in ways which can create headaches in VRED if not carefully managed up front, where you're working with instances, multiple copies, things with scale embedded, uh, a lot of problems like that. So the workflow I'm going to outline here gives a good method of sorting engineering data in alias to smooth the downstream VRED workflow. So if we jump to VRED now, I've, I've got an example engineering file from, from the Lugon project. Uh, at face value, yeah, great, it's all in, it's all here. But when you start sort of interrogating this in the scene graph, uh, if, we, if we open this up and start looking through it, you can see there's a variety of uh, subcomponents, subassemblies within it, within this, where there are uh, transformations attached. Now you can go through using the optimize tool, uh, work through that, and hit optimize, and gradually go through the pile. But you'll find, as as we have, that in some cases, like like this. There's nodes that don't want to clear out their, flush their transformation histories, flush out their instances. Uh, and you can, you can do your best to go through it, but sometimes the data doesn't respond no matter what you've really got ticked in here, um, which can get problematic. And it can mean that when you're working with the data in VRED later on, when you're shuffling things about, when you're reorganizing files, when you're importing multiple things, you might want to group things, move things, shift them around within the data set it can all start getting very complicated. So what I want to do is just walk you through what I do in Alias when I come up against one of these files uh, to make life a little bit easier. So if we switch to Alias, um, we've, we've got that engineering file in, in its raw format straight out of step. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pick that top level node and go expand instances which will take a, a little bit of time to process on this PC. It's doing things in the background, but it's basically taking every instance copy and turning it into a unique piece of geometry in its own right. Then what I'll do is I'll go edit, ungroup, and I'll actually collapse all nodes. So that basically flattens all these sort of subfolders and, and groups that we've got within the file. Again, it takes a little bit of time to do. Um, but you'll find it's worthwhile. So now everything is, is now single level uh, individual components and shells. Uh, and then as a clear up, I'll go pick object and we'll just go delete. We can delete null nodes so you get rid of any dead ones that are in there. 
And my final thing that I'll do, which I mentioned previously, is go edit. Where am I? I want to go zero transforms. Zero transforms, and that just kills any resolving bits of history for the data, which again takes a little bit of time to process. So those key steps just help flush that data out and do a bit more than you can do in VRED on its own. And then if we just go file, save as, save that as a WAR file, it'll save out. And then what you'll notice when you compare the two files, the original step file versus what we've got, is the original file with all those instances in it was collapsed. It was very small. It was you know, 32 meg. In its fully expanded format, it's 127 meg, which sounds like you know it's a big jump, but don't worry, VRED can cope with this, no bother at all. So if we swap to VRED now and we go import, pull in that modified file alongside. Take a little while to chew through it and get it meshed, but what I'll be able to show you is, is the difference between the two on screen. Okay, so now we've got our file into VRED, it's imported, and if we move that alongside so you can sort of see it by comparison, if you actually look in this tree now for the modified version, all you've got is a single series of shells. No grouping, no subfolders, whatever. It's all, it's all one piece. So it's very easy to just pick everything in there, throw a group around it, drag it out, do what you need to do with it. But it means that for the life of that file now, you've got really clean geometry. You've got a series of very, very clean shells inside for your, that are very easy to edit. They've got no transformation history. Uh, and it avoids any issues downstream if you want to restructure the file, you want to build bigger files, swap things out, apply additional scales, empty things out into different subgroups, um, which you will find as you get further and further into handling more complex VRED scenes like the one we used at the start of this clip uh, becomes invaluable and it just makes uh, assigning shaders, getting things structured altogether that much easier. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope you found that of uh, some interest and, and use to you guys. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.